Let's <laughs> 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 just move my uh, PlayStation 5 oh. controller out the way. Oh, oh yeah. You don't, want, you don't want people knowing you've got a PlayStation 5. Fuck it up. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's just one of them. That's just one of them uh, filters Fridges. on Instagram. Oh, a fridge. <laughs> the size of a fucking fridge. Mm. Bigger than my printer. Oh, maybe it's a bit. Oh, <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Not Another Conspiracy Podcast with, in Michigan, Mr. Dean Salter. Hello again, everybody. And in... No, he's gone. No, he's gone. <laughs> Uh, there he is and, and in back. York it's, it's literally connected to everyone on the street fucking Wi-Fi like, <laughs> <laughs> and in New York struggling with the Wi-Fi connection right hang on JJ I'm just going to delete, gonna delete everything I'm going to delete them all <laughs> just delete, delete them all right click my computer and click delete <laughs> yeah con- alt, control alt delete forever <laughs> And uh, task manager end process of my life. Somebody <laughs> knows somebody knows something about this episode. They know I'm gonna drop the fucking bomb. I'm gonna drop the <laughs> actual so bomb much. on this. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna firstly apologize for the quality of my audio <laughs> this week, uh, because we had a new router put in at the office and uh now it won't connect to the Wi-Fi, which is bizarre. Uh but that's resulted in you in a different room. I take it. I'm in, I'm like, in the. I'm in the just the main office. Uh, with the uh, not the PlayStation Five. Ben just turned. He just turned his chair around. He just wants everyone to know he's got a PS Five. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a PS Five. I'm going to blur this out. That's that room sounds very cold. It's not. It's boiling hot. Oh, it is. Oh, it's so it's hot. It's first time England's, I've had to put my heating on here in England. Michigan, is so hot right now. Well, I looked earlier. It's twenty-one degrees, bloody centigrade. Yeah, on Canvi, anyway. <clears throat> is Jay there? JJ still there, or is he frozen, just smiling, or is he trolling us? I can't he's tell. Just, <laughs> he's frozen. For all the listeners, he's sat there. Oh no, he's back. No, he moved go. a little bit. He's uh, this is a little... fucking. This is an actual joke. Like I've he's literally so... deleted every single network on my computer, Can and it's still connected. Yeah, it's 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 connected to my phone, but it just keeps connected to direct T U E one J J. I've deleted all of them. <laughs> it just keeps. How is it on. able to connect to them then? If, right. So, oh, you can remove them, can't you? You can remove yeah. every yeah. single one. Okay. This right. Is the, remove. This, this is a brilliant. That's beginning what he meant to the by deleting people. them. <laughs> no, no. I I just turned auto join off all nah, of them. You got deleted, mate. Yeah. Well, yeah, but what happens if I you, ever go back to that you, place again and I have to ask somebody for the Wi-Fi? That's embarrassing. Well, you're gonna have to talk to someone again, mate. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> that. People. I've literally <laughs> been in London with my mum for three days. I've done nothing but listen to her <laughs> shit. <laughs> if you're st- and if you're still listening to the podcast after the first 10 minutes of just Wi-Fi issues, Jibber congratulations. Jibber. We're gonna talk about the Titanic today. I'm connected to a printer that I fucking used to work with <laughs> in 2009. <laughs> oh man, this episode is literally the Titanic right now. I feel like, or 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 the Olymp- is it the oh, Olympic? it's the Olympia. Oh, Olympic. Olympic. Yeah. <laughs> is it the Olympia? Or the Olympia? Or the Olympic. <laughs> the Olympic. It's Fuck the knows. Olympic. Olympic. Okay. Right. Yeah. I guess. I guess uh, the listeners will know that we've. We, we talk about conspiracies on this podcast. It's it's yeah. known. It's been known. Uh, it's, it, and, and I think the Titanic might be... I remember when I, when I first heard that there was a conspiracy about the Titanic and it blew my mind. Well, I remember when... I think the Titanic was the first time I, I questioned whether something could have been so big that like it, it just could not have possibly been a conspiracy theory. Like that was the one time where I sat there and without thought or even 
the idea of what the conspiracy is, I sat there, I was like, no, nah, that's there's, there's too there's too many lives lost and such a catastrophic event. There's no way that that could yeah. be a conspiracy theory. But it sounds like it could be. <laughs> well, the, the research I've been doing has led me down the path of probably a conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna me lie, too. I think it's probably a conspiracy here. More than one, maybe. Possibly. I feel I yeah, uh, well one I feel like I'm pretty solid with like yeah. I'm I'm pretty pretty uh on the side of it uh how about you JJ um yeah the research I've done also leads me down the avenue where I feel it might be a conspiracy <laughs> <laughs> not another uh, honestly, one <laughs> I know my brain is exploding with conspiracy theories it's there was... almost like we we seek them out yeah. episodes for our podcast this uh, yeah. because mum, months and months of effort because uh we were talking the other night dean when we did the live stream me and ben right oh, he's frozen again he's frozen again <laughs> that's the secret was about to come out then he, he was probably going to say that we're talking about how how nice you are as a person oh uh, yeah i'm sure it was that. yeah he's gone now, so. <laughs> Um, well, while we wait for JJ to re-emerge from the ether or the matrix, from internet uh, gulag, what what was the what did you before you... somebody really doesn't want me to do this fucking podcast because <laughs> 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 literally, I, honestly, I was just like, I was just about to say we've already done this podcast, and then oh, it yeah. literally oh. just went off. Yeah, oh so my... we were talking oh. we we're talking about this podcast, and <laughs> JJ is convinced that we've already done this podcast before, but he's frozen again. Um, and I, the, he was so convinced that I could, I was convinced we'd already done it. Really? Yeah. See, whereas he, I'm not, I'm like, I know we haven't. Come I know up. we haven't done it. I know we haven't done it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I feel like it's probably one of those conspiracies that, I, well, I, I feel like most people have heard of it. To be perfectly honest, or they they're aware that there's something up with it. So I think naturally you're just like, oh yeah, of course we did. I I don't know because I've just been for dinner uh, and I had a couple of pints, but I was <laughs> discussing it with people and they didn't know that there was a conspiracy with the Titanic. Really? Yeah. Fuck. They didn't think there was one. It's just like, yeah. I just a lot, I, pe- a lot of people over here they're aware of it, and I don't know why. I don't know whether that's a cultural yikes. thing. I don't know. But JJ, though. you think we've already done this podcast? Yeah, sorry, I keep disconnecting. It's fucking bullshit. Um, I'm a hundred percent adamant, and it's not it's not even me who only thinks it. Spoke to the people at the studio the day after we did the live stream. They're adamant we've already done it, and my missus is convinced that we've done it because basically on the way to work when we used to do research back in the day when we were you know when I, when I was like hardcore researcher because you know like that. That's my number one role in this. Like I'm the I'm the <laughs> number one research guy. Um, I put the I put the a couple of the podcasts in my in my headphones, and I was like, as I was walking down the street across the road at exactly the same point where this thing did, and I like lolled, I like stomach laughed. And- no, JJ. He stomach laughed. Right, he stomach laughed. He and stomach then laughed. His heart stopped beating. And he realised that he was living in the Matrix. So that and he was, was the actually that listening to he was himself. Actually listening to himself, but he in was the listening future. to himself on a different part. There he is. Right. I think it's probably the best that I just restart the computer because I don't know what the fuck's going on. I've deleted every network and I don't know what the fuck's going on. Right. Restart your computer, okay. uh, and then we'll discuss some some stuff. Okay. <laughs> you you just you just go as you just go what you need to do. You do the well, the, pre, the, his, the, the pre-log. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, right. Dean, you know more about this than I do. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> but the, the 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 I guess we, we we can talk about the what happened before the launch. But should we talk about the day what happened on the the day of the uh sinking? Sinking, but also <laughs> no, it wasn't the day of sinking. It's the the day of the uh, what's the what's the first uh, maiden voyage, maiden oh, voyage in inverted commas, right, right. Of the on, Titanic. Yeah. I um and at, at that note, I just closed. <laughs> I just closed <laughs> my my damn um notes. Oh shit! I'm this is 
Yeah. Oh, you've got them open. Can no, you? No, uh... I've got your ones. Ah, right. Um, well, send send yours across over um, on the Discord as well, because yeah. Oh, oh God, guys, <laughs> this is been a, this is a long podcast, and we've not even started yet. No. <laughs> But it will, we will get there. We will get there. Um, current topic discussion, right? Ah, there we go. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right, oh, God. Some. Wow. Holy mother of Jeebus. Yeah. So that, that, that first bit that's in the, well, we're now discussing what's in our notes live on the podcast, which is yeah, really Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> But there are a lot of notes because obviously there's a lot of things went on. It was a lot. There's a lot of moving parts in a in a ship, especially a ship this big. It was it was probably the one of the biggest okay. boats of its time, right? Well, time. here we go. Now I can possibly it get. It was the into most luxurious. Them. Well, yeah, it was. Uh, so originally it was White Star. Uh, White White Star Line uh, was a was a was a boating company and we're looking at becoming a, a monopoly uh it was acquired in 1903 by american financer j pierpont pierpont morgan most people never, never, heard, of never heard, never heard of him never never heard of him no, yeah no idea who that but is jp he doesn't morgan seem is. nefarious in any no. way no he doesn't no, he, doesn't he doesn't seem reptilian in so uh yeah he was an american international mercantile marine uh he was looking at creating a monopoly for the north atlantic passage trade uh, the chairman chairman of the White Star Line was uh, J. Bruce Ismay. Uh, both put together a plan to build three superliners, uh, first, which was the Olympic, then the Titanic, and finally, the Britannic. Um, moving on with a couple of uh, little facts as well, uh, leading up to, I guess, like the event in general. Uh, the first of the new ships uh, were to be practically identical as well, and this is where um, a few of the questions do come in because both the Olympic and the Titanic share a striking resemblance, but there are exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, practically, but there were allegedly a few yeah. differences. So um, anyway, most ships in the early 1900s were known as coffin ships, and that was down to the fact that um, they were poorly uh, constructed and um, the owners were known to overcrowd as many people on these ships and insure them um, to, uh, to uh, uh, ca catastrophic amounts because they just knew that things were going to go wrong and the industry in itself was full of fraud. Uh, it was widespread uh, and almost like a pandemic that we're in, unfortunately. But um, OK, so on the 14th of June 1911, the Olympic made her maiden voyage under the command of Edward J. Smith. Now, if you've seen the Titanic, or well, you know of the Titanic, Edward J. Smith is the captain. Uh, is, or the he, co Commodore, I think they call them. Yeah. He was the, he was called the billionaire's captain, wasn't he? Or the millionaire's captain? Oh, what, uh, I did, I think I come across that. So he was called the millionaire's captain because he was, he captained so many um, ships that crossed the Atlantic. He was like, he was wow. he was known for it and yeah. all the all the big wigs and the the elites and that they really they wanted to be on ships with him captain, commandeered by him yeah captain by him yeah that was the well it, it just so goes he, it just goes to show that you can get a job no matter what your history is and it's all about who you know yeah. because um okay uh in on the 14th of june 1911 the olympic made her maiden voyage uh under the command of edward j smith uh, Commodore of the White Star Line, as Ben basically mentioned there. A week later, uh, still under the command of Commodore Smith, the Olympic was involved in a stern collision with the L.O. Hallam, Hallam, I think it's Hallenbeck? The L.O. Hallenbeck, and it was a tugboat in New York that almost caused the tug to sink. Uh, barely three months after that, on the 20th of September 1911, again under the command of Edward J. Smith, the Olympic was involved in another collision with a British warship, HMS Hawk, in the Brambles uh, Canal or the Brambles Channel in Southampton. Um, this is all prior to him commandeering the Titanic. Um, when you say commandeer that, it makes it sound like he stole it. <laughs> to, uh, to commandeer this bike on the way home from the pub. Yeah, I'm going to commandeer yeah. this vehicle for police matters. <laughs> JJ, so, no, two, so your, your internet looks two, good now. Yeah, I'm back now, yeah. I'm back, <laughs> I'm back. So two podcasts I listen to, just throwing this out there straight away, get it out there, get it off the 
the edge of the ship. <laughs> said said that Captain Smith was a transvestite. Well, and I'm trying to find it now. I think it's bullshit. Yeah, can't it's, find it's, anything it's, about I've it. heard that as well that he was he was he liked to dress as a lady. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, one of the jokes, one like of the jokes that. was that he dressed as a lady to get off the ship. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't, he I don't know if you guys have already mentioned. Yeah. No, he, no, we've not got to that or anything. Like I haven't that even yet. talked about the ship sinking yet. Again, I haven't even read the notes, so this might be someone's <laughs> like sketch later. But I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, yeah. we'll wait. We'll wait. Till don't we do my bits. <laughs> do your bits. Okay. Do your bits. Okay. So um, do your own bits. So the HMS Hawk was pulled in uh, due to the uh, suction being created by the... It was by the, sucked uh, down, right? Like well, a... well, yeah, yeah. So that this was because this ended up having to go to court because it's a, it was a royal ship uh, and, and all the... Or I believe the, the court for, like, naval vessels and stuff like that. Anyway, it was pulled into, uh, into the ship due to the suction being created by the Olympics' powerful propellers. Uh, the warship didn't stand a chance, gouging a hole in the starboard side several several meters high. So that's not just like a dink or anything like that. That's like a pretty severe piece of damage. Um, any accident, as I mentioned, uh, you've involving... seen Superman four. Uh, he he repairs. A... Oh, he does, doesn't he? <laughs> with, with the oil he... leak, he opens it. I mean, originally when he's bad Superman, he opens it up. <laughs> And he creates the oil spill, but later on in the film, he then returns it, blows Was the it? oil, literally blows the oil into the <laughs> back into the <laughs> ship, and then repairs it. So, so that, for any for anybody who wasn't born in 1980s, this mm -hmm. is equivalent equivalent to a guy getting the rubber seal and slamming it against that pipe, and it all That's of a it. sudden stops all leaks. That um like Phil Swift and theme. and that guy is no not in a wheelchair and fully disabled like <laughs> Superman, <laughs> FYI. Yeah. yeah, that and then, then again, if you weren't born in the eighties, the man, the original Superman that we know, Christopher Reeves, fell off a horse and then was disabled until he died. Dis <laughs> disabled until he died. It was. <laughs> He didn't miraculously not be disabled. No, but he was... <laughs> never mind. Carry on, carry on. But yeah, no, so imagine, right? Look at, I think it's Superman 4 or Superman 3. Yeah. Three or yeah, four. It's the one with the meeting man anyway. But go and watch that. The, con the conspiracy then... is they thought Superman did it. <laughs> that that yeah. will explain to you the kind of size of the gash that the HMS Hawk created within the hull of the, uh, of the Olympic. Olympic. Uh, anyway, so any accident involving a Royal Navy ship was investigated by the Ad, uh, Admiralty who found the, Olymp the Olympic was at fault, although evidence and eyewitness accounts suggested otherwise. Subsequently, White Star insurers refused to pay out on this claim. Now, that's a very important incident, everybody. The fact that the Olympic was so severely damaged in this clash with a Royal Navy ship that the insurance company refused to pay out. And back then, I believe the ship um because obviously our notes are a little uh lenient here with this i believe the olympic would cost two million dollars to make or was it four million dollars to make i think it was, it was a, that was four million and the the titanic was seven million um, well, so, yeah so because the, the titanic was slightly more grandiose uh, right yeah, yeah yeah the olympic was about four minutes like so a lot, of people, a lot of people in this day and age will be like, what, what's two million? But of course, this was back in like 1911. Well, the so the equivalent of that would be about 280 million today. So Ooh. if we're, if we're going to talk about like uh, money and stuff, we'll get onto that when we get onto the price tickets of the Titanic, the tickets yeah. for the price. Mm. Price for the tickets. <laughs> Fucking wasted. <laughs> <laughs> because... That's where I know that people were getting fucking shafted. Yeah. That's that's the that's the conspiracy. It's a fucking joke. Yeah, I tell, I well, tell you that. Especially the uh, VIPs, the first yeah. class, they were paying a hefty amount big, of money. Right, big right. fucking bollocks. Yeah, go on. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so um, the whole. Oh no, I've read that. Uh, moving on. Anyway, the damage uh, was fairly severe. Steel frames buckled. Thousands of rivets popped. Uh, steel plating dislodged over four decks and distortion to the starboard propeller and crankshaft, which ended up causing um, 
uh, the kill was like so bent, it caused the ship to lean slightly to port side. Port side, I believe, is left. P O R T. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And remember that, people, because that is very important later on. Yeah, a tiny bit later on. Um, so it naturally caused a, uh, a, a natural lead uh, lean to the port side. Uh, six months later, when the Titanic made its maiden voyage, second class passenger Lawrence Beasley, a science teacher, noted that the ship seemed to have a slight permanent list to port on the first part of the voyage. Surviving passengers also noted this too. Brand new and ship has a lean to it, it matching the damaged ship it previously. Yeah, and allegedly there were there, there is some video footage um, in the documentary that w both, all three of us, I imagine, watched was the um, uh, Titanic. The no, what was it? What was it, Ben? You suggested I can't read the, uh, shocking Titanic, truth. the shock, Titanic, the shocking truth. I love I love how you were like, I bet I, I bet I won't be shocked. And then like I remember like an hour later, you were like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I am shook and shocked. <laughs> So the amount of research that I did was uh, the terminology for the distances between the waterline and the top of the ship. So if anyone wants to know those, hit the Discord because I know all of it. <laughs> I thought the conspiracy was like the ship didn't even exist. So I've <laughs> I've got I've got the measurements to prove it. Just <laughs> FYI. Okay, so um. Yeah, in Southampton, the great hole was patched up by riveting steel plates below the waterline and reinforcing with wooden beams above, taking around two weeks. Now, that sounds pretty, like, lacklustre. I think yeah. that's... That sounds like the most cowboy job I think I've ever heard of. So one of the, one of the things that people um, acknowledged in this, that if you were to do it properly, the what they would do is they would put boys in the water to lift the ship up. So they, oh, really? again, the boys yeah. The, so, oh, right. so you would, you would, you would buoy the water, bring the boys in and it would essentially lift the ship up to fix it because you oh, right. can't apparently, well, back in the day, you couldn't weld or rivet anything with the pressure from the outside. So to you essentially like, I mean, there will be engineers now arguing with me that you can do this, but Back in the day, you had to, unless you were welding, you would have to rivet on the inside and then rivet on the outside. But you oh, couldn't right. physically do that back in the day in the water. So you have to lift, lift the boys up. And there's a weird, a weird, whether this is relevant, I don't know, but there's a weird <laughs> correlation between. So I don't know if you guys have mentioned when my internet was down that the ships were mirror image built against each other. Well, one, yeah. of, what, one of them is six inches taller. Oh, well, so I haven't all, gone to like all, specific dimensions. Okay. But there were yeah. slight differences. Very like I say, the, the only thing I uh oh Ben's coming in again. We've got <laughs> Ben's clone arriving in the Discord. Just as a very small pixelated NFT of Ben for the <laughs> listeners. Uh 12 A day you can have it for. Um just I'll give you my address later. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so apparently back in the day when you were when you were actually doing those uh, fixtures on the ships, you had to bring not boys like boys, Bo you had buoys, to put them in yeah. buoys and then bring them up, and then you would be able to do the rivet in above the waterline or the drought or the draft, however you want to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, you ain't got to apologise. Definitely took you the gap there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, October 1911, it went into the... We're talking about the Olympic still at the moment. Uh, so October 1911, it went to the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast for more permanent repairs. Take note, all workers from the Titanic were instructed to focus all repair on the Olympic, uh, and it took seven weeks, and the Titanic's propeller uh, was put on to the Olympic as... Also, during the clash, there was some, some pretty major damage had occurred to the um, the Olympics propeller. So they ended up uh, propeller, sorry. So they ended up just basically removing the Titanic propeller, whacking that on the Olympic, and then taking the damaged Olympic one and putting that on the Titanic. And I don't know, possibly repairing that to make it a little more intact, possibly. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Um, 
I'm at the end of my notes here, so one moment. Oh Let's no, do don't it. worry. I'll, I'll I'll just bring up my notes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the distances. I'm having w issues. We're having Zoom issues. Pedia. <laughs> <laughs> we can't pedia. Um, so are we we're still talking about the Olympic, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that I missed a lot of this. So so it it went on its maiden voyage in uh, 1910, right? Which was two years, four years before. I think it was uh, 14th of June 1911. Yes. Eleven. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, Olympic. Olympic <laughs> ship. <laughs> I know, yeah, I'm just... So, in comparison to the... I don't know if there's anything more about the Olympic because after, from when it got fixed, it then moved... Well, did it move or was it was it stationary next to the Titanic for like I believe a year, they, two years? I'm not too sure with those details, but from what I remember, they were but side by side for a little while, at least. And um, it was also noted when it was all repair and stuff was focused on the Olympic from the Titanic. People said that they started noticing that um, was it the uh, the Olympics carpet and stuff like that was to be appearing in the Titanic. Like yeah. they were doing like recarpeting and wall, I guess maybe wallpaper in there also. Because from from what I gathered from the Olympic was that it was actually going to be the it was going to be the big boy because it was actually bigger than the Titanic. It was yeah like in terms of like I, th I think these like nautical guys they're all about weight. They don't they're not really bothered about size. They're all just like my fucking bitch is so much heavier than your bitch. <laughs> like it's all it's all to do with tonnage. So they're all just like yeah. This one's a fucking boy, but apparently it was six inches taller. Which, uh, again, going back onto the the um, twin towers, they were that was six foot taller, I believe. Really? It was it was just short of uh, two hundred. One, one, one of them was taller than the feet. other. Yeah, one. Well, yeah, taller. and one oh, had a right. massive and uh, it, it, radio mast as well. Mm. Well, it was to do with uh, it was to do with regulations in New York because if it had to be over two hundred, I, I think two hundred feet it had to be uh, a different type of building. So one of them was 198 and the other one was like 192 or something like that. And it's right. just weird. I mean, all right, granted, when it comes to like metric, it was, you know, six six is a, a correlation number between all of these. But from, from what I gathered with the Olympic, that was it. It just went and it went into harbour and it just stayed there until the Titanic sailed off. But it was just there. It just stayed there and nothing really happened. Or did it? Well, the Olympic Ooh. continued to the the Olympic continued to work as the Olympic, not, not the, the Olympic that became the Titanic. The Titanic right, became yeah. the Olympic. Continued to work until it was retired. It never sat. But it only did it only did test sales, didn't it? It didn't do it didn't do like uh domestic sailing or like cruises or anything like that. It didn't so the idea was that the Olympic was going to go and do the same trip that the Titanic did or right, yes, did yes, not. That is true, it, was, yes. it was meant to do that, but it was almost like, from what I gathered, it went out, did its test trip, realised it fucked up, came back. And the re... Well, I'll, I'll get into it when we start talking about the the iceberg. Yeah, yeah, like the main... Yeah, it, main... It's to, it actually does roll back to the tonnage of it. So the tonnage is is very important when it, deal. Yeah, yeah. when it comes to this because, well, we'll talk about it when we start talking about numbers and tickets and all that fucking logistical shit that like yeah, you know really does matter. Really does matter when you've got a boat because obviously you know when you're in the bath and you you put loads of beer in the bath and the bath starts rising up, like mm. you know that the volume does matter when it comes to this. The Olympic continued to go back to New York and all that until 1935. You see, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, but that obviously, but remember the, the Olympic was fucked, constantly fucked. It was crashing. It was having issues. The propellers were going. And it was all because suddenly, of Jay Smith. No, well, no, not even that. Suddenly the Titanic sinks and then the Olympics, this perfect ship with no issues. That's, yeah. That's like a big one for me. Yeah, so the, the, a... the actual test, the test journeys that the Olympic did 
were to see whether they could physically do it. Because I don't, I'm not, again, I haven't, I don't know the history of transatlantic uh, sailing prior to that on, on such a big scale. Have they ever done it? You know, because yeah. it was, it was the biggest, it, the biggest, grandest ship, fucking massive, tonnage is huge. Have they ever done it to that level before? Probably not, because not as big as I don't, that, I don't remember do any. I, yeah, but I don't remember any fucking Hollywood films about any other ship. Yeah, because they didn't that. sink. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> but I did any of them get, saying, Did any of them get to America? Like, yeah. surely there would be films of yeah, but of that scale, of that grandeur, like no, no, there wasn't no, anything because, as big as that. No, I mean, I can imagine like little fucking like peddlers getting over there. I don't know what that is. And it was yeah. <laughs> right before the. Uh, the Titanic or the Olympic did the transatlantic uh, crossing. There was the ocean liner SS France, which sailed for French shipping company Compagnie Generale Transatlantique. Uh, right. 2,000 people were on hand to witness the ship's grand debut. That did it. Um, yeah. It, it was they were the 2,000 people who died at 9-11 or the Titanic, were they? Uh, that's, yeah. that's, no, no. that's a bit convenient. They weren't. They yeah. also so weren't making documentaries 18, on child trafficking. No. Eighteen ninety nine. The first. Uh, They're all Wayfair employees. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, that's the thing. You laugh. They're just shipping themselves in fucking containers now. That's just like <laughs> you laugh, but you'll you'll never guess what company had thirty percent of the cargo was with Wayfair on the Titanic. No, shut up. You're no. You're pulling my leg. Now you're. This is. This is a bit. This is a bit. You're doing. Yeah, it. Wayfair wasn't a fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say. I was like, no, pack it in. No, but it more wasn't. importantly, how many nonces would have been on board? Well, All of them. It what? was earlier. It, yeah, because it was the it was the 1900s. So you know, everyone. Yeah, back in the 1900s, it they fucking it was allowed. Like back in the Greek well, I was times. Say, yeah, it was. They fucking legal, loved it. In thir- 13 years of age, in that. It's We've already there. talked about this, right? There's a yeah, there is a so. there is a god of boy love in Greek mythology. There is. Oh, yeah. Uh, what? So I I wound I wound a customer up about it once, and he was just like, I don't get what you mean. I'm like, but you're getting all these other gods who are like holding big gloves and like throwing big fucking like things around. I was like, there is a god of boy love. Why don't we just do him? And he just didn't. <laughs> he, we just changed the whole tattoo. Sorry, digress. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, there, um, I guess paedophiles were equal. Probably they say that there was the equal amount of paedophiles in 1900 as there were in 2020. Should we say that? About the yeah, same amount that, of percentage. So, Don't want to alienate anybody, do we? Yeah. So, <laughs> was, it 12, was it 12% or 5%? I can't remember. Oh, you said five. <laughs> For you've anybody listening, uh, these two are just these two are just really invested in these in these <laughs> statistics. They're important. I mean, you can you can hear it go tap it, tap it, tap. Well, I'm I'm just interested. To he said, he, did you know that among uh, almost what is it five percent? So it's five percent estimated the people are paedophiles. It's five percent. Of only apparently only two percent of the Catholic clergy are paedophiles. That is absolute <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Two percent of the ones that have been arrested. Yeah. Like so, so let's let's times that by ten, twenty percent. Yeah. One one in five people in the clergy are paedophiles. Uh, easily more than that. Yeah, okay. Right, so anyway, the Titanic, right. Five percent five percent. Five percent. Of 2002, so, 111 paedophiles. Well, 111 people got done right then. So well, that's only people on board. So, uh, oh, yeah, okay. There was 111 paedophiles on board. <laughs> How many died? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's, that's only, that, and this is, this is purely just word numbers. We don't know if more paedophiles. You know, paedophiles could have drowned. More paedophiles could have drowned. You know, more people could have survived. We don't know. I've, I've heard statistically paedophiles float better than they normal do. human beings. No, that is, yeah, that <laughs> got so, so much built up, like, tension with children. Like, back in the day, maybe not. Like, now, maybe. But they're just... Now they just... Okay, cool. They've yeah. got the internet, just... 
Maybe that's it. maybe that's the reason Rose let Leonardo DiCaprio just float she off knew. into, she into knew death because she knew she was like, "There's plenty of room on this door, but I know 76. some things about you." Seventy-six, <laughs> yeah. 76 child molesters died. Good uh, during the, <laughs> right. the Titanic. Okay, so <laughs> it, unless anybody has got some more notes to add to the build-up, um, well, I've got one to add to the build-up of the Titanic. Okay, but this is before that. So. This is say say that the Titanic was just the Titanic, and there wasn't a switcheroo. This is just a bit a tip bit of information that a lot of people don't know, but this is one hundred percent true. Okay. The real reason that the iceberg was able to rip through the hull of the ship so easily <laughs> is because one of the coal storage bunkers had been oh. fire for weeks and had yeah. almost melted through the side of the ship. It had been discovered in Belfast before it left the Southampton. I'm they glad were... you brought this up. Mm. They, they were supposed to dig out the fire as it as they went and try and do it, but it was just raging and raging and raging. And instead of just stopping the... and Because you have to dig out a fire, but they thought, right. well, we might as well just dig it out while we're on our way to America. But they didn't. They just let it burn. So and... that just, that's bananas to me. fire, yeah. No matter what so, ship it was, whether it was the Titanic I think, or the I think we should get I think we should get to the actual crash because this is there are so many conspiracies based around that idea. Yeah, yeah. That, that almost are the reason why everybody thinks it's just normal and it just happened. But yeah, just keep okay. just keep going until the actual crash because that oh, well, I've got a timeline of the day and all of the events that concluded to uh, up until the sinking so right. if you gents would like me to read times and along with a list that i've got from the yeah. history on the net.com you okay. just let me know when celine dion starts and we'll yeah, get no we'll get that yet. we'll okay. get that section in towards the end <laughs> okay so 31st of march 1912 yeah. was when the fitting of the titanic was completed 2nd of april 1912 uh the titanic began sea trials now there was something uh, interesting about when it came yes. to the build up to be able to allow a new ship to begin sailing on its maiden voyage yeah. it has to pass stress tests Not uh, the well, Titanic. sea trial it has to pass sea trials and stress tests and blah 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 and originally the when the to. originally when the olympic had first began the trials um it was noted in a documentary that uh not documentary, I was listening to the podcast, the Conspiracies podcast on Spotify. They'd done some research and found out that it takes several hours and sometimes possibly half a day for most ships to have their trials completed and stress tests. And the Titanic's was done in like two hours, which is... It was the Olympic. Well, well, <laughs> it was, yeah. It was it's a conspiracy. The Olympic, it was called that... It was it was called the Olympic, but it was essentially the the original Titanic that was being built. That her, oh no, sorry, it, I'm even getting confused at the minute. It was originally the Olympic, but it was the Titanic that we have grown up knowing. So it passed the stress test um, quicker than any other ship possibly has. To, like almost genuine, take the test. No. Genuinely, two hours even. That even sounds too little, like in it general. Does, like, doesn't it? it? It should be like if it was to do with modern engineering, you're talking like mums. It isn't. Yeah. Uh, so to do stress tests on a bike, you essentially have to let it warm up, let it cool down, test it, let it warm up, let it cool down, test it. And unless you're doing that in, in, in a controlled environment, that takes right. months, like mm. to, to genuinely let it pass on a ship that, like, like what's the. The tonnage, the tonnage is so high with all that metal, especially to do with something that's got compressed steam in it. Yeah. Right, like, yeah, is, yeah. Isn't something, because it isn't like it was now. It isn't like it is, sorry, it isn't like it is now where you would test every individual element in its own stress test and then put it in. It would yeah. be, you have to do it in that controlled environment because that's the only way that you could ever test its thing. So I call bullshit immediately on that. Like, yeah. yeah. It, uh, two hours, two weeks would even be too little yeah, for that. So the, the original stress test and seafaring thing that the Olympic went through was a couple of weeks. It wasn't a couple of days. There you go, yeah. And then the they said that the Titanic was back for lunch. 
Yeah, and that was like that was done in an afternoon with like yeah. no problems whatsoever. Yeah, they were okay. back for lunch with it. So So yeah. they, they just they just kept like driving it into an iceberg and reversing <laughs> it out. <laughs> See, <fine>. Thrusters <laughs> Thrusters See, on right. reverse. <laughs> Full throttle! <laughs> Just kept going over and over again. Like okay. thumbing in a dry one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> or a cold one. <laughs> thumbing in a softy. Not anyway. thumbing in thumbing in a cold one. I mean thumbing in a <laughs> Yeah, go uh, on. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, 3rd of April 1912, the Titanic arrives in Southampton. So the 10th of April, not, I won't keep saying 1912, at 9.30, uh, 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., Passengers arrive in Southampton and began boarding the ship. Now, this feels like a rather convenient area, JJ, if you want to talk about ticket pricing at all, if you is now, okay. or did you... I'll, I'll be quick with this one. Ticket pricing. Entry-level ticket pricing was equivalent to about £600. That was for a, uh, like a sub-level, oh. Leonardo DiCaprio level. Third class. Third class. Yeah. Second class was equivalent to about two thousand pounds, which was second class. So you would be like, no, I don't think they even included second class on the video. They were that unimportant. They, yeah, you were, either, the you were either the bottom or the top. You weren't. Yeah. You weren't a middle guy. You'd put yeah. a suit on, but only for your dinner. Whereas in the would've... top guys wear suit all the time. The bottom guys wear suits all the time, but they were covered in shit and tobacco. <laughs> yeah. um, the bass players of passengers. Top guy. <laughs> yeah, the bass players. <laughs> Definitely covered in shit. Yeah. Hello. We're just talking about Titanic ticket prices. <laughs> All aboard. <laughs> Sorry, my girlfriend. <laughs> we keep spoke it about this already, yeah, remember? Keep it, keep it down, please, JJ. Okay. Um, right, get this. First class tickets. So 600... 200, sorry, 600, 2,000, 77,000 pounds to be first class. What? That's yeah. the yeah. equivalent in today's money. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. They fuck, I didn't even know what it was. Like They, they were like, one biscuit, 12, <laughs> 12 backy tins dinted, <laughs> and then the top one was like, five Caviar. skinned mackerels and a polar bear. Uh, yeah, it was... <laughs> Yeah, seventy-seven thousand pounds. It would or seventy-five, seventy-five. The, the gap, and apparently the, the difference in service between first class and second class wasn't that much. It wasn't. It wasn't seventy-five grand. Difference. That's fucking absurd. Yeah, absolutely absurd. So, the first, uh, so in the film Titanic, I've not seen it, but I've seen clips of it. They took they 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 look upon the third class like they're. Uh, like they're the servants, workers. yeah, but they're not. They they had serv they had service. Like they had yeah, in, service yeah, because in the movie, in the movie, um, they were well. It was mentioned. Oh, they were in bunk beds in, <laughs> in the past. Yeah, when it sometimes with like a lot of uh, long distance sailing back in the early nineteen hundreds, when it came to like third class passengers on not cruise liners but larger ships, they wouldn't even be. Sometimes these journeys would take like two weeks, and they wouldn't even have a bed. Like mm. they would almost have to sleep with like livestock and yeah. stuff like that. But whereas, not on the Titanic. Um, right, but not on the Titanic. Whereas also in the movie, they kind of portrayed it that they got like sort of thrown to the wayside or anything. But even first class passengers had beds to like sleep in. And back then that was that was something like absurdly special. Like that yeah. was uh, a, a, like almost life changing element. Now it's like, oh my God, third part third class passengers and we don't have to sleep next to cows like I don't we know actually if you, any, get our own bunks any of you guys have ever stayed at a generator hotel that's how mm. i imagine the lowest class in that place because we stayed at a generator once when before we went to go see my chemical romance there was like 25 people in this shitty bedroom and Is it i worse was than on, a hostel i was on the bottom of a bunk bed and the bunk bed i'm not gonna lie was four people high it was a four person high bunk bed what the like, fuck? That yeah. sounds horrible. That sounds like a Final Destination scene the, the waiting top, to happen. Yeah, there's, yeah, just like... Da, 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 <laughs> and I'm just like... Dead. Mince me underneath. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, it was terrible. And that, that's how I imagined the bottom bunk. And there was no dancing because it was just full of German people just saying, get off my bag. That's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> 
get off my back. Get off my back. Get off, get off my back. Mr. Mr. Man, get off my bag. Get off, get off bag. my bag. He just kept saying get off my bag, but I wasn't get even off. on his bag. I was just get stepping off my out bag. of bed. Don't leave your bag at the bottom of your get fucking my five bag. fifty foot my ladder. Please but get yeah. off my bag. So price levels pretty drastic, but that's how shit it was in Ireland. All the Irish wanted to leave. And 600 quid, though, now... To go to that's America. still expensive, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, especially as you go to New York. Like, yeah. that, that is probably the price of a flight now. And this is, like, yeah, is. 100 yeah. years ago. Yes, you know, sometimes pre- the cheapest, pretty cheapest, fl- cheapest flight I used to find flying from England to Detroit to visit Rachel was, like, £679, yeah. pounds, I think it was. Okay, so... 10th of April, uh, 1912, I said I wouldn't say it again, but I am noon, the Titanic set and began her maiden voyage. Maiden um, around six, uh, Around 6.30, the Titanic reached um, Cher- Cherbourg, France, and picked up more passengers. Uh, at around 11.30 a.m. on the 11th of April, the Titanic reached Queenstown, Ireland. Um, on the 12th and the 13th of April, the Titanic sailed through calm waters bit of a weird sort of timeline to include uh, i don't know why uh 14th of april throughout the day seven iceberg warnings were received mm-hmm. um probably more that's... than that was sent because yeah most likely the radio didn't pick up a no, lot the radio them. was completely um the radio would have been uh overrun with uh requests from passengers oh really oh, oh. Passengers. yeah ah okay so the radio was used for the first class Passengers would have had uh, someone they could send messages, basically. Now, now um, when you think about it in the early 1900s, that is like that sounds like an astronomical privilege. Oh, just pick this radio up and you can talk to us in like the captain's room. That yeah. sounds fucking bananas. Like, yeah, to so think back then, a lot of stuff got missed because 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 of, of the radio, radio communication. Yeah, so. Yeah, that was a little tip bit there. Like, okay, I mean, if so, you're not fluent in dot, dot, dash, that's your fault if you drown. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so 14th of April, uh, around 11.40 p.m., lookout Frederick Fleet spotted an iceberg dead ahead, which... Uh, How, though? People... Because he didn't have any binoculars. Right, which is an interesting thing. Uh, the iceberg struck the Titanic on the starboard right side uh, of her bow. By 11.50 p.m., water had poured in and risen 14 feet in the front part of the ship. Now, like Ben just mentioned, at the inquest after all of this uh, catastrophe happened, the lookout uh, claimed that he was unable to see... Well, because first they were being persecuted in saying that you knew that there was an iceberg in front of you, and and there were many icebergs in front of you, but... um, you said that this one come out of nowhere and the guy was trying to exclaim that he had no binoculars because the person on shift before him or the person that he had his because there was a massive reshuffle in the in the crew in the staffing and stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, which is another part of the conspiracy because they basically swapped out the crew so uh captain james whatever his name is or whatever he could be on the flight uh, he could be the captain they swapped out yep. loads of crew. The guy, um, the lookout from before who swapped, he packed his stuff away, but he took his binoculars with him. And I find that I, I, I find that just a bit hard to believe that you, someone would just there, there wouldn't be like in that crow's nest there wouldn't be actual place to just place yeah. binoculars so they do not go missing. Yeah. So whether exactly. wh- whether this is a conspiracy or not. And it, it, again, it works both ways. First thing I checked was, how was the light on the night that the, the Titanic crashed into the moon? Into the moon. Into the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and the Titanic crashed into well, the moon. You'd be, you'd be very surprised because what I've just searched, to just double check how the moon was, the Titanic went down on a moonless night. So even if they did see an iceberg, that's bullshit because they would have seen it. It would have been complete blackness. The light on the ship would not have emitted light downwards to see anything unless it was grand. And then the next yeah, thing the is... the stars would have lit it, right? How? No, because mm. the stars would only be lit if there was a, a gigantuan light shining on the stars. That's how we see light on Earth yeah. is the moon. It's not... Yeah. Mm. Um, but the second search is how did the moon sink the Titanic? 
because this is a conspiracy theory that is actually a lot bigger than you would expect. Keep hold of that then, man. Because it's 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 to do with the. Uh, all right, okay, I'll keep hold of it. No, yeah, do it, do it, do it now. Let's just oh, okay. go with it, man. Go with it. So, astronomers in Texas State University announced that March of this year that the pull of the moon is a creation of the tides, Earth's oceans, yeah. that it right, might yeah. have played a role in sinking the Titanic nearly a hundred years ago, causing death by ice water, approximately. Obviously, that you they died by mostly ice yeah, water. Yeah. yeah. But one of the one of the big things, apparently, with the Olympic, it had had a collision prior yeah. because of the magnetic um attraction of where they were going disrupted the the sort of like old school compass so like oh yes of course all, yeah, almost like to the point going... so they genuinely like apparently they went offshore and it just naturally curved and, around yeah and, and then the they ba yeah. barely missed fucking island again and like it literally was like oh sorry yeah, a material that they used in the ship would disrupt the navigator's compass and yeah. they, yeah, and as JJ was saying, they basically went in a loop and practically just crashed in, well, nearly crashed into Ireland. Because I think, I think it, it like, was something to do with the weld on the hull. They, yeah, they and the started using, using something that was yeah. like reinforced and they'd welded it on the hull and it was mm. almost just complete iron. So the compass just always went to the front of the hull. So they always <laughs> thought they were going going north, but it was actually just the front of the ship. And that they just kept sense. going around. And that makes sense with the Olympic then becoming the Titanic because it was fucked from the very beginning. Yeah. And the, like you were saying, if the moon really did have something to play in it, then wow, no surprise. That's crazy. But I mean, that's a, that's a pretty strong, a pretty strong conspiracy is about the moon because essentially it causes all kind all kinds of problems. Mm. That, that bloody moon, that hollow moon. Thinks he's thinks he's all high and mighty up there. I know, yeah. Okay. In, his in his smashing pumpkins video. <laughs> Go on, Ben. Sorry, I, I know up? a really good. I, I, I can explain the tides, but I've had too much to drink, so I can't. So the tide, <laughs> the moon, the Shinto. shape, the moon, like the gravitational pull of the moon doesn't pull the doesn't pull the tides. It misshapens the Earth. Did you know that? Really? But it pulls the Earth. So the earth goes from being round to kind of being pulled. So the tides oh, I see. up right. in yeah, those yeah. spaces. So the tides fall into those gaps rather than the tides being pulled up. I understand the what earth you're gets saying, yeah. Stretched. Is that scientific? Yeah. Or is that is that just because you've had a few beers? That's <laughs> that science facts. Honestly, that, officer. That science facts, people. Honestly, science officer, facts. we live on an egg. <laughs> I'll, I'll, find, I'll find a link. Uh, and if anyone wants it, Hit me up in the Discord. In the Discord. Okay, Disco so Discord. Discord. Gets, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, at eleven fifteen p.m., water started pouring in uh, and had risen fourteen feet in the front part of the ship. Now, uh, around twelve at midnight, the captain was told the ship uh, can only stay afloat for a couple of hours, and he gave the order to call for help over the radio. At twelve oh five a.m., the orders were given to uncover the lifeboats and to get passengers and crew ready on deck. There was only room in the lifeboats for half of the estimated 2,227 on board. Now, why, why, why would you not uh, put enough lifeboats on money. there? Right. So I reckon it's there's... a money thing. But it was, think... So the, the guy who's in charge of designing the Titanic, he suggested 48 lifeboats. That's fucking crazy. And there was 16. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, 48 so. over 16. So, uh, I don't know. Have, have we talked about the JP Morgan thing or are we leaving oh, yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. So, Go when I was it. talking before, I was talking before about the tonnage of the ship. Mm. So, the tonnage of the ship, obviously, back in the day, it was bragging rights that how big, how much stuff you could put on your ship before it sank. <laughs> which is really, really <laughs> fucking tragic. Yeah, isn't but it? Yeah. Back in back in the day, it was a bragging right that you would be able to be like, I can fucking fit fifty thousand people on the ship, and it wouldn't sink because of the buoyance of the ship itself. So you're mm. basically bragging that the, all the welding, all the steel work, obviously mining metal was a big thing back then. So you would be like, I've got enough metal to build a massive ship, 
and I've got all the fucking mechanics that make sure that it won't fucking sink. So fitting as many people on that ship was a massive thing. So that was huge. Yeah. So yeah. even when there was only the people you said on there, there was meant to be, I think, possibly maybe another 60, 70% more people on that ship. So the buoyance yeah. of it. But again, this is such a difficult one. because So we've already hit the iceberg, right? Or we're heading towards no, the iceberg. No, not yet. We're heading towards it. Okay. Just a spoiler alert, just in case anyone hasn't seen the 1997 <laughs> film Titanic, it hits an iceberg. Was it 1997? I don't know. Who cares? I have no idea. Right. I've never seen it. So there's a there's a few weird conspiracy theories, but I don't know how much to talk about them because I don't know how what you guys have got. But essentially, if the tonnage of the ship can accept these this much weight, the ship would have been so much lower, which would essentially widen the ship which would essentially have made the accident more uh, like, obviously the wider you are on the surface, you would have, you know, hit, hit things. Right. Yeah, but yeah. it also affects turning circles and all these things. So when these, like back in the day, when these ships were setting sail, they would have had a set kind of in, of instructions for the, the drivers or whatever they call them. I don't know what the fuck, what do you call a Cap ship driver? Captain. Yeah, but not him because he didn't helmsman, fucking anything. A helmsman, with. helmsman, yeah, yeah. This guy, right? Yeah, helmsman. So yeah, yeah. if if you were to make a turning circle when there was three thousand people on a ship, it would be slighter than if there was two thousand people or three thousand right, people. Of course, because you have yeah, to take yeah, that yeah. into consideration. So then, the conspiracy theory in my mind—that's when that comes in because there was so many. But we'll get onto that with, when it comes to the J.P. Morgan thing. But just putting that in there because. A lot of people forget that 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 affects a huge amount of things. So if you yeah. have six people in a car, you know, which you probably not meant to have, it affects so many elements where speeding yeah, comes into play, things like that, and amplitude and all like all these and, things are affected. So I, go, sorry, go on. No, and, and it makes sense really for when you can sit there and think that well, why didn't they just turn sooner? Even if they did see it, it's not even a case of that. It could be they had no. That could have even been seen and visible as, on the clearest of days and nights, and they still might not have had enough momentum it's, to have been. That's able how to. they make. That's how they make it out in the film, isn't it? Because yes, in the in the film, it's by perfect moonlight, and it's all like. And then as soon as they get close to it, they're like turn just, the ship, and they're yeah. just like, and it's almost just like. Uh... And if they hadn't turned the ship. They would have ploughed straight through it, and no, they would have lost half. The, they wouldn't have lost any lives because they could have shut that hole straight away at the begin at the front. Because they employed that guy just to slap that big rubber thing on it. And it just stops everything. <laughs> yeah. Sir, flex tape. If they gone, if they gone straight into it, it would have missed the 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 part of the hole that was weakened by the fire. It would have just ploughed. They would have just ploughed through the iceberg and not done any damage. Or yeah, just yeah. caused a bit of damage to the front, which they could have closed off in that compartment. Yeah. It so have, they, have they actually acknowledged the fire, though? Is that it, well? This it's is... up for debate. The whole fire in the whole thing is up for fire massively up for debate. Very, very well reported on pretty much every uh, every documentary I listen to. The the fire is just a thing that everyone kind of knew about in secret. Yeah. I'm saying the fire was a thing. Oh, yeah. Right. It's yeah. canon. The fire is canon. It's canon, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so 12.05 was when the orders were given to start loading all the uh, lifeboats up. At 12.25, the lifeboats be, uh, began being loaded with women and children first. The Carpathia, southeast of the Titanic by about 58 miles, picked up the distress, distress call and began sailing to the rescue. Now, I thought the Carpathia was the ship that was loaded with woolen jumpers and what that was that was the california the california now sorry. the california was about was in position to save the people of the titanic but right. they they'd stopped receiving commu radio communications and the the titanic had couldn't give its new longitude and latitude to coordinates, the California yeah. because it had shut off its radio uh, and was reporting about fireworks going off, which 
from another ship. So it was looking at one ship, but the Titanic was sinking like 30 miles off, off of its yeah, off of its course, yeah. And, and that's where that, JJ's goes, on. that goes to the JP Morgan thing is that the California was sent out so that no one died and yeah. the ship could sink and the California would just miraculously just be there. Yeah. So maybe maybe we should again I don't have the complete statistics about the JP Morgan thing, but I know what where it was coming from because I'll, I'll start with that. Go sure, down. yeah. Obviously, this was a big grand ship and people going over to America. Probably most of them were probably going to settle there. Um, I think there was something like 90, 92 of JP Morgan's closest consorts were, or were meant to be traveling on that ship. Mm -hmm. And I think it was about 70, 70 odd of them all of a sudden were like, oh, we're not coming. We're sick. Like we're oh we're, we're a bit ill we can't come yeah, very like, true. I mean, logically speaking, if they are close and you know they are part of the team, if one of them was sick, there's going to be a few of them sick. Yeah. But like eighty percent of them, eighty yeah. percent of them sick, and then like yeah. the weird thing but, is the other the other percentage of the people who were on the ship who were J P Morgan um, consorts survived. Uh, one of them. Yes. I'm going to come back on this one because I, I do know an interesting fact about one of them who not isn't alive now, but has a very, very strong connection with a lot of big banking stuff. So I'll let you guys yeah. carry do you on want me from to that give one. You some, do you want me to give you some facts on the JP Morgan um, Yeah, let's remind, let's remind right. a lot of people of these, JP Morgan. These following, these following facts are from the conspiracyblog.com. So the first one is probably not that much to do with the JP Morgan thing, but it does lend, lead it lead us to leads us into the conspiracy, and maybe where the idea for this um, to come from. Right in 1898, a man named Morgan Robertson penned a book titled "Wreck of the Titan" about a luxury liner deemed unsinkable that was going too fast in the North Atlantic in April and hit an iceberg, killing most everyone on board due to lack of lifeboats that that was 1898 that book was written right that, and that is absolutely exactly madness happened. exactly what happened and what is more interesting is where that that's where the um the fire in the hull uh theory comes from as well because the reason that they believe the titanic was going too fast is because Edward J. Smith wanted to get to New York as quick as possible because he was aware that there was a fire down below in the in the yeah. uh, coal depot. In the coal depot, need, not only because they didn't want it to obviously to catch fire and burn everyone alive, they needed to use that coal quickly, that quicker than it burned. Yes, exactly. So they could put they could almost put the fire out by using yeah uh, the the, the Just, coal yeah. itself, yeah. Um, which is also interesting because when we've been talking about the 9-11 piece uh, excuse me when we were talking about the 7-7 bombings we went through a list of the amount of times governments have used well the documentation has been found of like oh this is an operation that we want to perform and then like 50 years later something very similar happens i.e 9-11 and operation northwards yeah. um basically yeah. me saying that the governments have sat there and been like oh what if we stage an attack in some way like let's fly planes into buildings and then 20 years later it planes happens. fly into buildings yeah. yeah very similar with that book that you just mentioned the there's a fire yeah. and da 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 and you think back then there is some i wouldn't mind believing that some person as an insurance fraud has just been like well thinking about it oceanic uh, like luxury liners weren't a massive thing they were they, that whole thing was new when it was happening with the titanic and um uh the uh, Olympic, so it wouldn't surprise well, tra me. Tra Transatlantic ones were because it was right, essentially sorry, the, yes. a great a great distance because essentially they'd been doing they'd been doing it from Southampton over to the Europe's and doing it over to the like the Bel Air and all all that for a while because it's something they could do in a day or two days or whatnot. But this and was I've... this was grand, like this and was I've... the frontier men. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The new frontier going over uh, to the new world or whatever. But I think that it wouldn't surprise me if someone in that industry like JP Morgan and um, I forgot his name, Ismay, who was his um, assist, uh, his uh, 
I, I guess, partner with uh, White Star Line. It he wouldn't was, surprise uh, he, me. If, yeah, he he yeah. owned it and he was uh, JP Morgan brought him out. I think. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they were just like, oh, look at this book that's just been written about our industry, about like a massive cruise liner. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if one day they were like, point at the book and think. We need to do something about this. Yeah. I doubt everybody's read this book in the world. That's gonna, there's gonna be one person that will yeah. be like, "Hold on a minute, I read this book about three months ago that sounds yeah. oddly familiar to that incident." Back then, you wouldn't think that. So, yeah. I, I wouldn't put it past anyone to look at some book and be like, "I could perform this. This is possible." That's yeah. one yeah. thing that goes into. Yeah. Sorry, Ben, carry so, on with the JP Morgan. So, fact: JP Morgan funded and built the Titanic. Uh, yeah, because he bought White Star, uh, yeah. White Star Line, um, as yeah. we just mentioned. It's, yeah, and JP Morgan was booked on the maiden voyage of the of. So the, uh, you got to think of it this way: if you you own a company that's just built the biggest, most grandiose ocean liner, well, a history maker of engineering, you're going to be on that maiden voyage. You're going to yeah. be like, this is my ship on there. If if you don't know that it's the Olympic, it's going to sink. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Fred, it, uh, yeah, he he booked he booked he was booked on the voyage, and he cancelled at the last second. To which, when he claimed that he cancelled because he was ill, he was later found in France with his mistress having a knees up with her. So, like, Fuck it's enough. not like, oh yeah, I'm I'm not going to go on this ship that I have built and funded and is going to make absolute history by being the biggest luxurious crew liner to cater for third, second, and first class passengers. But instead, I'm just going to go and have a knees up with some broad over in France that my wife don't know about. Pardon? Really? He expect? I don't doubt he was found because he probably doesn't give a shit that his Titanic is about to sink because he's like, whatever, doesn't matter anymore because I know what's yeah. going on. <laughs> one of, that just sounds so guilty. One of the things that like, this is the thing when Hollywood gets involved with it, because if Hollywood gets involved in it, it almost feels like it's a cover up instantly. Right. But one of the things with Hollywood was that the they're really and they still highlight in all Titanic documentaries is about the way that the holes were made internally about like if one fills up yeah. it had this damage plan to stop the rest of the ship from fucking caving in. There's so many documents about how bad the bulkheads were in that in that ship that they oh. were almost made to cave like made to cave. So like as soon as one like essential steam compartment filled up. Because they were the walls were built on an angle, but they were built on an angle like traversely, they call it. So like yeah. a, a, against the way that you would travel. So like yeah. essentially, if you're driving in a car and you hit something, you're gonna hit it forward, like right, same as a ship. But the holes in the Titanic were apparently traversed like this. So as soon as they fill it with water, this part oh, like just caves in, yeah, and then just lets all the water in, and then it just gets it. You know, it's a knock-on effect. Jesus and there's Christ. A, there's a guy who wrote a book called The um, the Inevitable End of the Titanic, I think it's called. I'm just trying to... I've got it here, but... And there's also a guy who wrote a book called The Ritual Sacrifice of the Titanic, which is oh, where I, I want to get involved, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get yeah. to that. Um, um, Chuck, we you... probably won't. <laughs> It'll get to, like, 10 o'clock and we're like, no. Let me smash through these facts then, because this is pretty much the whole J.P. Morgan thing. A uh, friend of J.P. Morgan, Milton Hershey, also cancelled at the last minute and survived. Of the Hershey of the Hershey chocolate fame, exactly. right? Hershey to chocolate build, to build the Hershey food empire, and so it's basically Hershey's for uh, English and American or British and American listeners. Hershey's uh, for English listeners. Hershey's is the dairy milk of America, uh, America which tastes like your vomit. Chocolate is terrible. It tastes like yeah, shit, your, yes. your, your chocolate and is they, and the, awful. Craft have brought out De Cadbury's in the UK, and now Cadbury's tastes like shit as well. Oh really? Oh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, there was there was also no red flares on board this to signal any boats to rescue. Only white flares that signal a party that yeah, everything is okay. Yeah, that to me sounds horrific. But I would put that down to whoever it was uh, paying off the shipyard maintenance and inspection crew on the ship, and just being like, "Our ship's fine, isn't it? Here you go. Yeah. Our ship's perfectly fine." That's that again. It's something you wouldn't even question, is it? You'd just yeah. be like, all oh, right, yeah, cool. Especially if you're a daft lad who's just like, oh, oh captain. And yeah. you just like <laughs> throwing oh, the rope around, like, yeah, mate. The amount of money that was probably involved in paying <laughs> people off is 
you know. Ah, crazy so amount. There's a lot of talk about Captain Captain Smith um, being the like, transvestite, being a transvestite <laughs> and inept. But apparently, he was one of the most decorated captains of his time, and it would have been totally out of character for him to have avoided uh, any sailing the Titanic by precautions. Yeah, it would have been out of character for him to not take care and do it properly. Right, uh, that's why, like we said earlier, he was the million, the billionaires or the millionaires captain. He captain, was known yeah. for the successful trips across the Atlantic. Um, so when they kind of dis, you know, they try and discredit it by saying he was a transvestite or you know um, he was a drunk. Uh, or he they fled. were using him as a patsy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Huh. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Like most airline pilots are pissheads. Like if you're if you're sailing a ship. You're gonna be you're gonna be a record, are you? Let's be honest. Like it's not quite the same as flying a flying a plane. No, like, I'll say just, it's rather you, stressful as well. You just you're just flirting, aren't you? Like, yeah. well, where are we going today, boys? I don't know. Sure. And then... I don't know. <laughs> right. The author, blah, 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 blah. The, the author Morgan Robertson, who penned the book Wreck of the Titan, was poisoned by suicide. Slash poison. Oh, he was suicided. He was death. He was poisoned to death, but also made to look like a suicide after the Titanic sank. So Can hang on, he... are you telling us that he poisoned himself, and you believe it was suicide, or people, general people, believe it's suicide? It was. It was. It was led. People were led to believe it was suicide, but we know what people do. We know these people. They suicide um, people all the time. And what was the name of the book again? Wreck of the Titan. Wreck of the Titan. Mm. And he was just killed, like, after the sinking. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. He killed himself. He was suicided after now, the... Now, would you think that... Well, he's going to sue there... him for copyright. <laughs> <laughs> James Cameron's going fucking wild now. He's just like, would, would you? I mean, let's be honest. Back then in 1911, people were fucking idiots and weird. Like people probably still, a lot of people probably still believed witches existed in 1911. Um, they do. Would would it be would it be so far as to maybe? Maybe he felt guilty and was just like, how the fuck am I going to get away with this? Then my book I've written has just literally predicted the most catastrophic naval event in history. Everybody's going to think I'm some sort of like witch yeah. or like wizard or something. Well, you, you know, it goes back to that synchronicity and that, um, uh, what's it? Helia. Uh, uh. Bit of Helia, yeah. But also like the predictions that we said we were going to do as an episode, it's a, it could be a prediction or it's someone it's given someone the idea, but either way, like, do you have guilt for that? Is there some kind of guilt? Right, that's that? what I'm saying. I wonder if he did feel yeah, well, like, immensely guilty. I guess there is a, like, a prediction remorse because you, when we, we were talking about Hellier, it's like, are you willing it to happen so it has happened? Like, yeah. that's yeah, the, okay, yeah. maybe the... But, I mean, the guy wrote a fucking book, and if the book got published, it's just like, mm, bit coincidental. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you mean. Like, why would you waste your own fucking money writing a book about a ship that might sink with loads of people on it and then yeah. making a fucking film or a guy made a fucking empire out of Rolex watches? Like... <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, fucking Cameron fucking made his own Rolex watch based around the time that he spent directing that film. Like, he you know, did? it's a fight. Yeah, The Deep Sea oh. is, is based on the time that he... Did the Titanic? Oh, right. oh I never knew. Yeah. yeah. Um, Random fact. What, what a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So on board, uh, the Astor family was one of the richest family in the world, and John Astor III opposed the Federal Reserve. And for those, oh, yes. so the Federal Reserve Bank is basically the reason that everyone is so fucked in this world now because and, and privately was... owned bank. And it was, they, wasn't it that people were headed to America to talk about it with like the US government? Yeah. Uh, uh, John Jacob Astor, the fourth, uh, the richest man in the world at the time, a friend of Nikola Tesla and an outspoken opponent of the creation of the Federal Reserve. Astor gained his wealth in part as a real estate builder, investor and inventor. Other prominent Federal Reserve de detractors such as Benjamin Guggenheim and Isa Strauss also died on board. 
See, that's suspect. That's sus as The Federal fuck, Reserve was formed the next year. Right. So conspiracy part, whatever. Have you guys heard the theory that it was sabotaged because they believed in their mind that electric technology for vehicles was going to be the next thing? And they believed that coal and fossil fuels Yes, was... I heard about this. Again, I don't know enough about it to be like, yeah, but if you were going to try and sabotage something, the best thing would to do is like kill loads of people at sea with coal technology because it doesn't work. But then in my mind, I was like, surely an electric vehicle at sea is probably the worst thing ever because if they all went into the sea well, and they were just like, hold on to me, Jack. And then Jack's like, yeah, no worries. <laughs> and he's fucked. He's dead. Yeah. yeah. He's, well, it's an electric he's fried chicken now. There's an electric ferry that goes from, I think, Isle of Wight to, to Southampton. So it's it's not that hard to believe, like especially if the, the guy who was against it was Nikola Tesla's pal. I mm. mean, all right, that, that guy was just trying to make crazy fucking electro music, wasn't he? Like, <laughs> like all that shit, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. All right, sorry, yeah. Just just getting that in there, because that, that was one weird theory that I heard, and I was like, you know what? Seems logical. Like, yeah, kill it, killing off no. an industry opponent. Yeah, but just kill them all off. <laughs> Drown them all. <laughs> Is that right. you? Don't. I've got. I've got. I've got. I've got a big bit to read. Uh, Excellent. Read now. Um, the privatization. Right. This is so. This is directly from conspiracyblog.com. Okay. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'm going to read it exactly how it's written. Because okay. there is some funny bits in there. The privatization, <laughs> the privatization of the U.S. Federal Reserve was ushered into being by a group of the Illuminati banksters with a plan to create a new world order. Operating outside of the constraints of the U.S. government, the privatized Federal Reserve controls the U.S. government's central banking system. Unknown to most people, the Federal Reserve <laughs> is no more federal than the Federal Express, FedEx for normal people. Yeah, <laughs> it is a privatized delivery service. I oh, never knew it was a private institution. Mm. Through never the Federal Reserve, the banksters could loan money, shape the world landscape, and become one of the most powerful organizations in the world. Here's how the Federal Reserve and the Titanic are connected. <laughs> so many offended American listeners. Uh, just, just, just before we go too far with that, when you were talking about FedEx, just for anyone listening, it's the same as Amazon. Everyone thinks that Amazon are really great because of what they do in terms of delivering stuff, but their big, big fucking thing is uh, logistics. AWS. No, they're so big, they're they're like two yeah. big things: logistics and um, cloud da services. Yeah, database, like cloud yeah. database. But their logistics service is the same as FedEx, and it just seems to be that they, even the USPS or UPS are so bad at it because it, FedEx has been around so much longer. Like the U UPS. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. If anybody wants to talk to me about uh, logistics in the Discord, just send me a message. I'll reply soon, you know. In 1910, sorry. seven men met on Jekyll Island, just off the coast of Georgia, to plan the Federal Reserve Bank. Nelson Aldrich and Frank Vanderclip represented the Rockefeller Illuminati financial empire. Henry Davidson, Charles Norton, and Benjamin Strong represented J.P. Morgan, Illuminati. Paul <laughs> Warburg, Illuminati, represented the Rothschilds, Illuminati, banking dynasty of Europe. <laughs> the Rothschilds were the banking agents for the Jesuits and held the key to the wealth of the Roman Catholic Church. The Federal Reserve did have Illuminati. Some... <laughs> Illuminati. <laughs> the Federal Reserve did have some opposition. Three of the richest, most important of the, op the opponents were Benjamin Guggenheim, Isidore Strauss, the head of Macy's department store, and Jacob, John Jacob Astor, probably the wealthiest man in the world. Their total wealth at the time using dollar values of the day was more than $500 million. Today, that amount of money would be worth nearly $11 billion. That is insane. These so uh, just before you go too far, the problem is with these demographics, uh, sorry, these statistics is that people don't take into consideration the way that those people move the money. So like saying $11 billion doesn't sound that grand when you're talking about Jeff Bezos, who has $200 billion, but yeah. it's because of the way that the money's moved by those people. Carry on, Ben. These three men <laughs> were coached and encouraged to board the floating palace. 
They had to be destroyed because the Jesuits knew these men would use their wealth and influence to oppose a res Federal Reserve Bank, as well as various wars that were being planned. JP Morgan, the individual contracted to build the Titanic, was scheduled to be on the maiden voyage, but canceled his trip. All three men who were opposed to the Federal Reserve died during the sinking of the Titanic. To me, that's just way too much of a sort of coincidence. Like, really, yeah. That's in that like, day and age, that sounds like uh, over-the-top assassin yeah. assassinations. Yeah. This, this, too, I could believe it. I'm going to put this into a 90s wrestling reference for, for you guys. <laughs> Uh, Amazing. Raw, uh, the I can't Raw, wait for this. <laughs> <laughs> gonna, who's Rowdy Roddy Piper? Can I be Roddy no, Piper? Can I be Roddy? There was a there was a Royal Rumble in which uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, entered in at number one, and Vince McMahon entered in at number two, and then at number three were members of Vince McMahon's uh, faction, the Corporation, uh, oh, the Triple H, and, and all that. All that they they slowly yeah. entered. So you know, basically. Uh, that's what happened to these men. <laughs> they got done over in in They got done over. It was a Royal Rumble. Uh, they, they got Vince Stone McMahon. Cold was just fucking throwing people. They're trying, the to, they're trying to fight it, and they and eventually, eventually, the corporation won. <laughs> uh, but, but, but but in true wrestling, um, in true wrestling fashion, Triple H, uh, Stone Cold came back in the last minute and won after. Yeah being put in hospital but it's fine because that because it's wrestling's not real the titanic sinking was though yeah but yeah. anyway the federal reserve was installed as part of the federal reserve act in december 1913 roughly one year and eight months after the titanic tragedy world yeah. war one was ignited less than a year later theorists believe that the federal reserve and the jesuits were responsible for funding the united states germany and russia in the war bang yeah it's so they built they believed it. It was the trans. Like I've seen it referenced a lot of times. The transatlantic handshake, and when you see the word handshake, it's in quotation marks. So they say it's basically handshake. like we're getting everyone on board because we're bringing our fellow brothers over from there to to sort deals out. But oh no, it didn't even get like twenty five percent of the way. Yeah. Oh, what a shame. Guess we'll just have to uh, yeah. do what they what we think they wanted. It's almost right. equivalent to like a token burn in, in like cryptocurrency. Yeah. It's just like, we've literally just lost like 900 of the most important, well, probably not 900 of the most important people, but let's say like 20% of those people. So like 200 of those most important people in the world have just drowned. Like, Jesus. oh, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll just scoop up what they've got and fucking make it better. You know, like it makes sense. Like it really, really does. It does already sound like it's just elitists. You right. are taking advantage of an opportunity. Sorry, Ben, carry on, mate. Right. So uh, there's some nagging questions. It's got more. I like this. There's more. <laughs> there's right. Fucking more. You can nagging tell he's had a big round. With days to go before sailing, the Titanic was not yet ready, and the Olympic was still sitting barely seaworthy in a dock. It is here that the unthinkable happened. Bruce Ismay and J.P. Morgan realised that if the Titanic does not go to sea on the April 10th, they are going to have big money problems from passenger refunds, especially when the price of the coal was at all-time high due to coal strikes. They told Captain Smith, a Jesuit, their plans, And the transvestite. That, I, th I still don't think we should malign, malign transvestites here. He was a he not. I'm, just, I'm just saying he's a, he's a bad captain and he's a transvestite. That's just the two, a sad, the two aren't the sad correlation. Yeah, there's, you know. <laughs> sad correlation. Yeah, they would cancel all <laughs> other White Star crossings for a week surrounding the Titanic sailing so that they would, really? not, so they would not have to pay for coal. Passengers affected by this will be offered a cheap ticket on the Titanic so that the White Star would make money on it. Captain Smith was paid handsomely for sinking his ship on the fifth day. He was told that everyone would be safe as they would make sure there were in the vicinity other ships. And that was the, uh, the uh, California, California being one so, of them. Just for anybody who's listening who has only watched the film, Captain Smith did not go down with a ship. If you've said that before, I'm sorry, but no, it, makes him, it makes him look so like, I'll only go down with this ship. He was one of the first people to get off the boat. FYI. I heard that he did go down with the ship. No, he didn't get down with the ship. He got off the boat. That is a fact. Yep. He got off. He got off the boat. He was on like the he second, was in the... the second tier of people who got off the boat. Yeah. 
because apparently there was some like what happens if these people are stranded on a boat and he had to like i mean to be fair if he was like i need to get on the second tier of boats because if everybody's stranded on a boat i need to look after him and they're all going Mate, you just sank that fucking thing. And you <laughs> literally, literally just sank the biggest ship, the most <laughs> undestructible ship in the world. I yeah. don't want you to look after this fucking get off my four fucking by dinghy. four plywood fucking boat. Like, <laughs> you can't even look after the biggest metal boat in the world. I'm You're gonna fucking have to, I'm gonna shit. Have to, I'm going to have to interject here. Okay. okay. You're talking shit, whatever. You're talking shit. No, nah, you've paid off. In nineteen eight, in the nineteen February nineteen twelve edition, quoted Robert Williams Daniel, who jumped from the stem immediately before the ship sank. In nineteen April, it's in its nineteen April nineteen twelve edition as having claimed to have witnessed Captain Smith drown in the ship's wheelhouse. I saw Captain nah. Smith on the bridge. My eyes seemingly clung to him. The deck from which I had had leapt was immersed. The water had risen slowly, and that and was now. To the floor of the bridge. Then it was. That guy's talking like, shit because if I he saw, saw him, him no fucking more, drown, he died a hero. <laughs> fucking bullshit. That guy. <laughs> that guy just wanted to sell a fucking book. That guy got off the ship. Like if you saw him and you just fucking stood there, but where where the fucking where was this guy stood on the fucking iceberg? Like <laughs> the ship. The ship was fucking documenting everything. Yeah, he's just like, well, this is interesting. I like to see how this plays out. Like, you <laughs> fucking he's the captain. Nah. What's going on here? I know, yeah. Look at that fucking weird bearded cunt who's in a dress. <laughs> I hear he likes Eddie Izzard. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm, I'm just seeing that he died on April the 15th, 1912. Mm. Hotly debated. Mm. No, I'm not mm. seeing anything to, but I'm only Googling it. So I'm not seeing anything to the to the contrary. Yeah, well, this is Google, isn't it? It's owned by the same Jesuits you've just been talking no, about. No, I'm using us. <laughs> <laughs> Get it on DuckDuckGo. Let's see what, they, see what the Russians have to say about it. They're just like, <laughs> Captain Smith still lives in Moscow in, in a dress. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing any... Still has country. the same grey beard and he's 145 years old. <laughs> well, if... I, I say this is probably a good point to say if you think that Captain Smith's alive and you have evidence, put it in the comments, I guess. <laughs> or put the, it in the world's Discord. oldest transvestite. Or join the Discord um, and let us know what you think if Captain Smith is alive or not. I think he's dead. I well, mean, he's definitely dead. He's dead now. But every single does. fucking thing. Like, it's so embarrassing. Every single thing about Captain J. Smith. He's got the most... He's got a higher resolution picture of himself than my fucking Instagram profile. Like, <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. And ev- all in brackets is like, uh, 1912 brackets, he died on the ship. He fucking didn't die on the ship. He was the first cunt to get off. He has got so many pictures of him, mate. Oh, that hang is- on. Apparently he killed himself. He shot himself in the head. While going down with the ship. Ah, oh, so what was it? It says he... people people claim to have seen him commit suicide using a pistol on the 15th of April, 1912. So again, so many fucking weird stories. Like, I mean, if it he... doesn't show you that on the Titanic. Good night, yeah. boys. I guess, <laughs> so if he's, if he's obviously been led to believe by the Jesuits um, that... He's there's going to be there, there's there's going to be a ship waiting. Don't worry, everyone will survive. He's just seeing everyone just piling into like the sixteen lifeboats and then drowning. He's probably just gone. Oh no! Bang! He takes off, but or or he also stripped some poor girl's bloody blouse off and threw it over himself. Jumps on the boat. <laughs> like again, like this, like from Four Lions, he'd be like, "Two bottles of bleach, please. Two bottles of bleach, please." <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because uh, I should have, I should have worn what I'm wearing now on the on the 9/11 podcast. For a second there, I got I, I did get scared. I looked like a Taliban. Hello. <laughs> ben looks really upset that we're not listening to it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's, fine. it's fine. Right. I'm sorry. Go on. Right, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> Apparently, his last yeah. words were "Be British." Be British. <laughs> Oh, wow. um, JP Morgan and White Star now had a problem. They could claim the money on the, t- on the Titanic Olympic sinking, but they would have to pay the bereaved. 
Nonetheless, JP Morgan and White Star did make, make money on the disaster. And a Titanic sailing under the name of the Olympic served the company for 24 years without incident. So that's the, that for me is the most shocking thing is that a boat that the Olympic that had just issue after issue after issue had damage yeah. done to it suddenly it's just the perfect ship and, and yeah. just sails for 24 years. And then the Titanic that's never been out to sea and is perfect in every way and unsinkable sinks straight away. Exactly. That's, that just sounds like an insurance fraud claim. Text. Yeah. So th again, th th they mention it on the, they mention it on the, not another, uh, not that's so sorry. The conspiracy guys, they mentioned the, hey. the claim of the ship prior and then they say that JP Morgan puts in almost very similar to the Twin Towers thing, puts in a, a yeah, big insurance a document insurance prior thing, to yeah. it. And yeah. it's to do with the, the insurance company overseas that they make that. So they, they make that deal almost like a like a an, an Atlantic handshake and be like, yes, let's do this. And then let's mm. just see how it happens. But let's not put any of our good employees on board because how would how would we ever start an empire if all of them die on the ship? Yeah. Have you, so have, have you guys heard the story of so there's a few witnesses say that the the big switcheroo between the Olympia Olympic and the Titanic of the plates because that's yeah. one of the big like rebukes isn't it like yeah but the plates said Titanic and uh, apparently there is witnesses seeing no, these people but the plates didn't say Titanic. All the cutlery on board both ships were White Star Lion standard issue. The, 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 only thing right. had, the only thing that had the Titanic or Olympic written on it were the lifeboats, the life jackets, and the menus. So, Ben, you sound like you're invested in this one. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the logo on the front of the ship because there's this there's this big thing where like somebody also said they were like they were seeing paint in it or no, they moving it across. So they had some letters and they were like, oh shit, we haven't got enough letters, so let's just like no. spread the let's make the kerning a little bit yeah. bigger well, on this one. So the what the so the Titanic, the shocking truth document. Oh yeah, let's use the term documentary very loosely here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they they talk about. <laughs> So the, but on both ships, the the lettering was embossed. It was in, it was like engraved into yes. it. it was indented. Yes, yes, yeah. And then on the then apparently on the Titanic, the Titanic that is the Olympic, yeah. The letterings were debossed, so they were out. So they were plonked straight over the top. Yeah. Something, yeah, straight over the top of them. Oh, oh no. JJ shaking no, his head. No, 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 no. The, pro the problem that the problem was that they were both embossed, yeah. and then apparently someone said that they were trying to paint it over, and the argument was that somebody was trying to fill fill in yeah. the the reserve. Is it the reserve? Yes, whatever yeah. whatever is the missing element that has been embossed. But two two problems there. If you're going to build a ship and you really want it to be strong. Don't hammer massive letters into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's one of the big don't things. Like, don't smash a big T and an I and a T and however you spell Titanic into the side of it. Yeah. It's probably not going to work. Just I say. agree with that. So that so the, so the shocking truth the documentary again in inverted commas. Um, at the end, there's this bit where they show you underwater footage and they zoom up to the boat and they see. It's got T I T, and then one of the, the A is dropped just off. an S, just it, says an A, tits. and it says O. And you can see the M and the P for Olympic, and then it's yeah. and then like, oh. and then I, t I told you this. I, I was talking to someone at dinner about this. If you watch it back, it's got like a little text like going computer generated like image. Ah, it's not really, like, oh, yeah. it done me. Oh. But then I watched the back. I watched the beginning again of the shocking, the shocking truth, uh, and it goes that. Uh, this documentary, this this film is made, it doesn't say documentary, this film is based on hypothesis uh, that the Olympic was switched with the Titanic before Void. Um, and uh, the, the directors and creators have taken artistic license. They're like, ah, you bastards. It's so, like they just fed you a lie almost. Yeah, but, but it was but, really good. Yeah, but what the main takeaway from that is the fact that there is so much reason for JP Morgan 
to be taking lengths to make an insurance claim because it sounded like so much was on the line for him with competitors of the Federal Reserve and the fact that after the um, the Olympics suffering so many crashes and the insurance company not wanting to pay out in the HMS Hawk incident, it sound that and these are all factual like pieces of evidence. It just sounds there's too much going on for they're not for some businessman to be like, hmm, I've got a damaged ship and a big insurance uh, claim that isn't being paid out. However, there's also people that don't want to agree with me trying to make lots of money. I need to make lots of money and I'm a businessman and I've got one damaged ship and one really good ship. And they hmm. look the same. And they look, this, there's too much sort of lining up for my liking to and not. Book, that someone's read that book and gone, we could yeah. do this. Now, just, sorry. I was going to say, I really want to hear JJ talking about the magic ritual though. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking about my own kind of thing here. I, I just, when we were talking before, I searched it and I was just like, there's so many articles about a magic ritual. Oh, I do love a magic ritual, though. I, do. I didn't even get to talk I mean, about my magic ritual. Before, before I find the magic ritual thing again, because I've clicked off the page, mm -hmm. one of the big th a big things, again, is the, the Cameron Deep Sea Watch. Like, there's no other director that I know that's got, has got this, this, like, accolade where he's had a Rolex watch named after him mm. and... All it's this so shit. Bizarre. Am I right? I'm, I'm right in thinking that it was James. It was James Cameron who did Titanic, yeah. right? I'm not. I'm not an idiot. Sea. Yeah, it's, it's, the, a, it's, it's a deep sea, and it's it's his only signature. There's only two deep seas. There's a black one and a James Cameron. That's it. Yeah. Like, so you're talking about the the big Rolex dynasty of people who, you know, essentially Rolexes are still fucking huge. Like, like why? Why? All right. Granted, he's directed one of the best films ever made yeah. in the no. eyes of Hollywood. Yeah, in the eyes of Hollywood. But yeah, right. why has he got? His, why has he been given his own watch? Because he has to have had the inside view of everything that's going on to make sure that he doesn't display things that, to a creative mind would be like, yeah, you can't yeah, do that. You can't do yeah. that. You can't do that. Like, you know, there's like, oh god, it's just so frustrating because you. There's just something there, you know, like nobody just goes, oh, you're a really good director. I have a Rolex watch named after you. Like the only, other, the only other Rolex watch that's named after somebody is called the fucking Hulk and Batman. Like <laughs> so it's not named after fucking anybody real, is it? It's like Hulk yeah. and Batman. Yeah. It's, not, it's yeah, just it's so bad, strange. strange. Uh, but it's not called the Hulk. It's just nicknamed no, the it's Hulk. Pe people have named it the Hulk. Yeah. But the, de the James Cameron one, is it's called, called the James, Cameron. James Cameron Deep Sea. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like two grand more expensive than a normal Deep Sea. Uh, magic Ritual. I had it on here. Sorry. I know. One really... about the, uh, I've got the one of the myth of the Titanic mummy. So that's that's kind of, I guess, Ooh. in vain with the whole yeah. ritual. Cause... I'll read that after you. You've got your. No, no, you go. For, you go for it now, because there's, so, there's, there's going to be another... a lot of mummies in that ship. Yeah, there's there was. Um, I remember re uh, reading about this. Uh, while doing the research for for this and uh i remember that well it was it's it's kind of more of a fun story that's kind of a myth and maybe a fact i'm not too sure so anyway among the stories surrounding the sinking of the luxury liner uh the titanic in 1912 was a tale about an unlucky mummy whose curse was uh, as responsible for that accident as that floating island of ice that tore open the ship's hull through the uh, though the story had been around for years, it spread rapidly in the wake of the popularity of the film Titanic. The tale goes something like this. <clears throat> in the late 1890s, a rich young English woman visiting the archaeological digs of Luxor purchased the coffin and a mummy of the princess of uh, Amun-Ra. He arranged for it to be shipped back to his home, but was not there to receive it. He disappeared, never to be found. One of his companions on the trip later died, another lost an arm in an accident, and a third lost his fortune in bank failure. One thing that annoys me about all of these kind of like old stories, where they're like, like for instance, when um, uh, Tutankhamun was 
found and it was like and suddenly everybody mysteriously died whereas back then people died of the flu like and, yeah. and various like it, it's never mysterious in and that drinking opinion. the water right yeah yeah shit like that so and they've I, been in although, a sweating tomb for fucking 20 hours right yeah yeah so uh the coffin reached england and was purchased by a businessman uh three members of the businessman's household were injured in an auto accident and his house caught on fire Convinced that the mummy was unlucky, the man donated it to the British Museum. We don't know any time differences between these incidents occurring. It could just be a fact of life occurring for, like, somebody. Yeah. Uh, so, again, I don't believe in all of that. Oh, I don't believe in curses and shit like that. But this is just too much of a fun story. Uh, the staff at the museum reported hearing, hearing loud banging and crying noises coming from the coffin at night. Of course they did. Uh, things were thrown around the exhibit room without explanation. Finally, a watchman died. Okay, <laughs> just that a was watchman. Uh, that, it's the Rolex guy. Yeah, he's a watchman. <laughs> oh, no. oh just, uh, just a shit joke. <laughs> Don't worry, let let that one then, sail. Then a photographer took a photo uh, of the coffin. When he developed it, the image appeared was so horrifying that the photographer killed himself. <laughs> Oh wow! I've done that. I've taken. It's a like this bastard developer. It took, it's like taking a Polaroid and being like, "Oh God!" Ugh. Put, like, put it under his armpit to heat it up, and he's just like, ah! and then he Captain then, Smithed himself. Is, like, Dead. What? Oh, anyway, okay, so. Um, the museum wanted to get rid of the mummy, but its reputation they could not. Uh, the, the, but it's, with its reputation, they could not even fr uh, give it away. Finally, an American archaeologist who didn't believe in the stories purchased the mummy and coffin and had it sent back to the states on board the Titanic. The rest was well history. And to this day, we call the mummy Madonna, and the archaeologist <laughs> was Guy Ritchie. <laughs> um, like a virgin almost anyway other versions of this story has the archaeologist bribing the titanic crew to have the mummy put into a lifeboat and later it winds up in new york city the mummy is sold and shipped again in one or two more ship and is involved in one or two more shipwrecks before winding up on the bottom of Imagine the sea going, you know there's only 16 lifeboats can you put the mummy in one please? yeah yeah quick everyone Fucking We're getting paid a bit of money. Put it in a lifeboat. Like, coffin. Like, don't put it in a fucking lifeboat. Put it in the sea and yeah, float on float. it. Like that's at least <laughs> six people on there. Like there was there was oh. a really good a really good thing on one of the podcasts I listened to saying like you know on the film there's all these people like playing violins and stuff. Yeah. Why why didn't everybody just get on that guy's double bass and just float? <laughs> And then somebody, somebody said, yeah, get on the violin. <laughs> just imagine like a guy on a violin just it's like, like that. It's, it's almost like in them cartoons where they're trying to get up the post. So like, ah. Sorry. Yeah. Just, just, anyway, okay. Sh shipping records show no mummy was on board the Titanic. Uh, brackets, this may be why some versions of the tale say that the archaeologists smuggled it on board. In uh, no, no account by why did any... Why smuggle it on board? <laughs> just over the top of his shoulder. Excuse what's me. It that, what's it that? What's it that? It's my luggage. It's my, ra it's my rather nicely so carved really? wooden loot suitcase. I've got 15 fine suits from Egypt. <laughs> Did you Just... know cannibals carved this for me? <laughs> oh, get on board, sir, quick. <laughs> In no account by any Titanic survivor do they mention sharing a lifeboat with a mummy. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call bull... I'm going to say... This is fucking well, bullshit. That's bullshit. It's a shame, though, but I think that... It's a shame it's not true, but... Do you know this? Do you, do you know what Baba Hotep was probably written about? The movie. Oh, Bob what a great film! Great <laughs> film about about a mummy that ends up falling into a river and just yeah. ending up coming to life and sucking the souls from the anus of old people from an old people's home. And it has the the amazing Bruce Campbell in it. It so. does indeed. So I've I've got this one here. <laughs> bearing in mind, this is Finn's my strongest. It's not my strongest point. Uh, okay. This is from the Mirror. Oh. Oof. Ugh. 
Bearing in mind, the mirror probably wasn't a thing in 1912, but Mm -hmm. uh, a message in a bottle was thrown from the Titanic hours before sinking, and it baffles scientists. What? Okay. Okay. A message, a message in a bottle, seemingly thrown from the deck of the Titanic a mere few hours before the fateful sinking, has left scientists baffled. A note is dated April 13th, so like two Two days days before before. this. Yeah, two days. Uh, And bears the name of a 12-year-old, Mathilde Lefebvre. Yeah, have you got it? Kind of. Or do you you just know, you just don't know ditch names, Dutch names? She does. Third, Jesus a, a third class passenger. One, where did she get the paper? Two, where did she get the pen? Three, where did she get the bottle? She's a thief. No, um, <laughs> the third class had quarters and they had maids and they had servants and stuff. They would have had access to stuff. Yeah, but they would have been below the draft or the drought, depends how you say it. They can still go. You, you, you were here when I was talking about the, the logistics of a ship, so. Like, <laughs> below below sea level, yeah, that's the only reason. Yeah, they can still go onto deck, though, right? They can go up onto the. Mm, I don't wouldn't, know. I don't you think wouldn't want to be walking around. It's like me walking into first class of an aeroplane, just like, all right, lads, You're like, fuck off, <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. What are you can doing? I here? Right, I'm looking. I'm looking at it now, and it looks fucking fake. Yeah, because I mean, it's the mer- yeah. That's not real, is it? It's not even water stained. I don't think that's the the fucking. No, it is. They scanned it. There's pictures of there's pictures. They There's a picture of it, it. On, the, on the microscope. Look, he's looking at it through a microscope. Uh right. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going back onto the magic ritual since you've spoiled my fucking mm-hmm. my thing. <laughs> it was so, the, the, right. So the the Titanic was quite close to New York. It, it was. Wasn't, it wasn't that far off. Oh, they were I, so close. I saw it. So when did it set sail? Like the twelfth. No, the it can't 12th. have been. It can't have been close yeah, to New yeah, York. Tenth of like, April. Tenth of April. Tenth, yeah, sorry. so five days. Like, right. I put a link. In this the is the chat. thing. Like everybody. Everybody put a link thinks. In the chat. All right. Okay. <laughs> I love how aggressively you did that. Like, I don't, I'm not going to read, I'm not going to read that. It says dailymail.co.uk. Read it. It's just a map. It's just a picture of a map. It's nearly as bad as my Daily Mirror one. Right. <laughs> it's just so, a map. For anybody who wants to research any other alternative ideas, Hasabumi, Hasana, it's a pretty good one to read. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that one because it's so weird and deep and it's to do with, it's very similar to the mummy thing, Dean. Oh, okay. It's to do with the relics that were on board, very much mm. similar to uh, Building 7 with 9-11. Oh, okay. Because, again, I was talking to my mum about it, like, this last week. 9-11 buildings fell down, and then Building 7 just fell down on its own, like, to do with an office fire. Doubtful. Um, <laughs> but apparently, because obviously the major- majority of people who were going over to America were taken a- across... Uh, ancient relics to do with their heritage and things like that. Right, yes, yes. It, it almost wasn't an attack on them. It was an attack on the things that they were taking over. Mm. So, like, rich people tend to carry things that are massively important in terms of why they've got to where they've got. So, yeah, of course. There's, yeah. there's a theory. That that one is a good one. Like, the Hatsubuma Hosona one is, is very, very good. Um, there's quite a few folklore kind of things that are to do with the this which then it, it does go on to the the ritual thing of the predictions yeah you know i don't know how much longer you guys want to go but it's a fucking it's a, mm-hmm. a weird one but the big one that i was thinking about was like what i said before about the the um the energy thing because if you've because it was at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, essentially, or maybe near like the midterm of the Industrial Revolution, and you've—I don't know if you guys have seen the um, the—I uh, can't remember what it's called—the thing with uh, the Great British powerhouse or whatever it's called, the th- the the thing with Nikola Tesla and the the other guy Edison, and there's oh, the no, I've not oh, seen. Oh, no. 
It's it's called the the wattage war or something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Ampage, war, yeah. ampage war is it? Yeah, it's it's something it's something to do with like them two fighting over it, and it's to do with Nikola Tesla being the underdog, and then the other guy being like he's got all his rich friends, and they plowed so much money into it, but then they eventually realised that it was not as good as they wanted it to be, and then there was like trying to sabotage the other one to make it look war, war of current current war the current war yeah. Yeah, and it was almost like this This can't be it because if we... It's almost like science now. You All these big scientific institutes back the ones that they believe in because it will make them more money. They're not interested right, in... You know, like, for instance, um, Jordan Patterson... Uh, not Jordan Patterson, Peterson. Jordan Peterson has just put out a big thing about Elon Musk saying he's made an electric vehicle. This was impossible. He's made a uh, regenerator of solar power. This is impossible. He's made a fucking rocket ship and it's renewable. This is impossible. Why isn't he dead? So like, Ooh, you've kind of yeah. got to think, you've yeah. kind of got to think, well, why isn't he dead? So there must be some agenda there that's, you know, good for the government because- Right, of course. Like yeah, yeah. The, rocket sh- the rocket ship is 10 for the price of NASA, what NASA, anything, have, NASA yeah. have made for fucking 80 years. So- there's something yeah, there's- there, you know, and have you noticed there's this big, again, sorry, going digressing, but there's, no, a, no. there's a big agenda at the moment. Like all of a sudden in Britain, we've, we're being bombarded with power prices all of a sudden. Yeah. And I spoke to you guys months ago about this uh, poly, poly cyber thing that they're doing in Ohio, where they're testing people, how long people can survive with outlet, without electricity, without gas and without internet, but separately. Whoa. And there's a there's a, a group of people who are there trialing all of it with wow so, like hell. the industrial revolution was obviously great for like being in your own land, but then domestically, when, yeah, exactly. And then when you're talking about transatlantic things, so you're like, well, if they go over there, that's almost like they've proved to them that it can work. So what's stopping them from doing something else? Yeah, and yeah. bearing in mind at that time we hadn't we didn't really have uh flight you know i think that flight was like 30s 40s so it was like you know at the time it was quite revolutionary so that to me that's the conspiracy the conspiracy is like there's something not a new industrial revolution occurring yeah. or at least being stopped by because the there's, a, dif- there's a difference between riding a car down the street and the wheels falling off and crashing into like one family and killing them versus yeah you having thousands of people making that because people forget about the people who made that shit run. Like there was X amount of people who died, but the majority of them were staff. There were yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you know, there, 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 there weren't the people cold. who just paid 77 grand for a ticket, you know? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's the thing. The majority of people who would have died pretty much instantly are the whole staff, like the, the lower deck, yeah, the you know, and stuff, yeah. Pretty much like the people on that documentary on Netflix, Below Deck, but they aren't sucking each other off. They're like, come on, guys! Like, dig, <laughs> you know, like, dig. Go like, harder! Dig. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Keep going faster. <laughs> Even though, yeah, because the thing is, they won't have had telecoms, will they? Like, we're going down, they're like, yeah, just keep going! Yeah, like, I don't think he can hear you. Oh, we're going. We're going to. And die. the guy's like, "Oh, we're going down. Let's just suck yeah, each other they off." Wouldn't, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have. Yeah, they wouldn't have made it. Here. They wouldn't have. I think it took. It took some like forty-five minutes for the message to get to the captain from below and deck it, that we're sinking. Yeah, and even then, wasn't it? Um, the initial captain had said that he immediately come onto deck or something like that, or. He had heard that there was a commotion, but he was asleep. He was he was talking about he just ejaculated on deck because he knew that. that was <laughs> Sorry, boys, I've immediately come on deck. <laughs> and deck deck was his uh, right hand man. <laughs> and just like aye aye, captain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all Ben's, salty. Ben's like this. This is really crude. Like. Let's just okay. talk about the real story. That Come on, guys. This is the real story. Of wanking on poop decks. <laughs> yeah, sorry, boys. God, he won that kinky. Um, yeah, I think. I think. What? What? What do we? Well, I think that's it, right? We completely. Well, there's, yeah, the, there's, the, the major, the major conspiracy around, like around the Titanic, is obviously there. There are the silly ones that we had mentioned, like one particularly about uh, the mummy and. 
for how <laughs> ridiculous that is. That's in the top three reasons as to why it could have possibly sunk. However, like we had been saying, like throughout this podcast, it clearly has to be something to either do with insurance fraud and also offing and Jeffrey Epsteining a lot of these business con- modules or future business fucking like legends interfering with something that would allow so much more control to so few it almost feels like there was too much of a coincidence of everybody being in the same place at the same time mm. granted were- uh, coerced onto the ship they were given tickets right. to go on yes that ship. right it's very 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 suspect in my opinion i don't I just, know whether sorry jj go no it's all right i don't know whether it's insurance and the idea of stopping the federal reserve or it's only one of them and only the other like i'm i'm, I'm stuck between that at the moment which one i i just want to point out that i think if anybody's watching this rather than listening I think Ben's trying to commit insurance fraud because he keeps flexing. He's got an Apple pencil and he's got his PlayStation in the background. He's like, I've got a really big TV as well. And I've also got a, coll- a collection of Oxford encyclopedias on a bookshelf behind me. So just want to let everyone know how much stuff I've got before this office burns down. Just, just say it. And he's like, look at this really nice This is why he wanted to do the Titanic table. episode. I know, yeah. <laughs> this is, this your... is a magic ritual. <laughs> this is your book. This is your book about the event. <laughs> oh, and he's Elite. also like, oh, oh I've Xbox also got controller. an Xbox. Elite controller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is I, mean, I think it was an inside job, but I think everything's an inside job. So it's... I think it was an inside job. And I think it was both those things. I think it was an insurance job and an opportunity. Like, we're, gonna, we're gonna sink the ship. Maybe they were like, we're gonna sink the ship. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna tell my mates to get off, but I'm not gonna maybe I won't tell these opposing to the, these people that are gonna definitely be opposed to this Federal Reserve thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell them to get off the ship because fuck those guys, because they're gonna cost me money. <laughs> maybe not to kill them. Maybe he doesn't think, oh, they're going to die. He thinks that they're going to get everyone off the ship. But Well, yeah, because they'll most likely want it to have gone back to Britain. And when these meetings probably would have occurred, it's not They're going to be too just... scared to get back onto another time in transatlantic <laughs> Probably. Ship. And by the I time just... it'll take to get there. I can just imagine them having dinner and the, the guy, like, the guy's wearing the white suits and stuff. They're like, sir, um, under the napkin. And there's just, like, tiny little rubber rings, like, little, like... You know, like swimming yeah, wings. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, like water wings. <laughs> and then it's like, just put that under your suit, sir. And he's like, what? What are you on about? And he's like, yeah, 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 put it on. And then like, they're all just like, they're pulling them all at once and they're just stuck in like the, the buffet queue. Like, ah! Oh. <laughs> Obviously, because if you're first class on the biggest yeah. ship in the world, you'd have a buffet service. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Have you noticed that those buffet trays say Olympic on them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just hey, look, looking down at his wings the, and he's like, Olympic? Here on the SpaghettiOs over here, it says, <laughs> get off the ship. <laughs> it's going to sink. Get off the ship, it's going to sink. Well, where am I going to go? And then he looks at the guy and he's got his arm thing over the thing and he's just like, yes, sir. And then it's written on the side like, no, sir. <laughs> We're going down. There's <laughs> <laughs> so many fucking... Oh. <laughs> Too many, oh. too many fucking signals going on. But yes, um, we think it's insurance fraud and Epsteining at its highest level. I think it's a bit. I would at least agree with that. On Epstein, like not digressing again, but have you seen the Bill Gates interview where he says, yeah, "Oh, he... well, he's dead." Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the best thing to ever say. Any like, oh, what about your your pal who had sex with under it? Oh, he's dead. All right, cool. <laughs> Forget that guy, then. Well, he's dead. He's dead. So anything he's done doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. yeah. They'll never I know. I've watched it, and I won't. It's funny. It is pretty <laughs> funny, Harry. She's just like, so what What do you have to say about mixing with this kind of man? Oh, well, he's dead. So but I do regret <laughs> it. And it's like, so, I'm like. So he's not very good at playing the game. That's no. basically what he said. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. But yeah. uh yeah, thanks for getting this far to the end. If you have, 
um, it's been a weird one to be perfectly yeah. honest because I'm the only sober one. Although I'm a little. Bit I'm not. Tired. I'm not. I only had two beers. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I've had ten and, beers. So. I know. And I'm also. <laughs> I'm also now Taliban. So for yeah, people that I've, are listening, uh, JJ's dressed in like uh, Taliban get up. To be yeah. perfectly honest. But like, really, really, <laughs> Is that a Robert? Is that a Cure T-shirt? Don't think, that is a Cure T-shirt. I don't yeah. think the Taliban like the Cure. No, I think they do. Oh, right, okay. Like boys don't <laughs> boys don't cry. If it was like girls don't cry, boys don't, boys don't and, cry. And girls don't unless cry. You, unless you hit them, that would have been a. <laughs> that's the special edition. Boys, girls don't cry unless you beat them with belts, well, and then they cry a lot. <laughs> the Taliban Russian. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, it, it has been a weird one. You're right. Um, if you've enjoyed this podcast, make sure you tell your friends. You join the Discord. You subscribe to the YouTube channel. We actually hit the monetization. We have. We've watch, hit the, the monetization. But not the subscribers. So if you're listening to the <laughs> Audible. Damn it. If you're listening to the Audible podcast and you don't subscribe to the youtube channel just go and subscribe to the youtube just, channel yeah it's the number itself like, yeah. physically helps out uh and make sure you're subscribed on all, whatever you do you um, you can find all the social media stuff in the description of the video yeah, also including so. the link to the discord which is where all the fun happens and if and you can will. hack our password so we can get into our oh, boys, account. instagram oh, account. Account. Awesome. Oh. Oh. Just, uh, oh. ben's a big oh. hacker Hold on as well. So in the last episode, before we close off, in the last episode, we mentioned that um, if anyone was willing to get a uh, don't sweat it, uh, Prince uh, Prince Andrew <laughs> tattoo, uh, JJ would do it for free. We have a winner. We do. I, I think, is it the same winner that you, you're talking well, about? No, I've just seen one because you showed it's that Joe. some guy was just ah, like, yes. yeah, I'll, my I'll my friend, Joe, he's my friend. And let's be honest, he's got some of the wildest tattoos ever. So that's oh, fine. Really? So we've decided that when Andrew gets convicted, we're going to do exactly the same tattoo, but he's going to be holding bars like this going, <laughs> don't sweat it. I'm going to come up and do it. Yeah, and Ben's <laughs> going to come up and do it. You're getting it, Ben. No, I'm going to yeah. do it. No, Ben's going Ben's gonna to do it. I'm gonna oh, do you're going to do it. Oh, God. And the thing is, Dean, you don't, don't know yet, but it. you're getting it. We've, no! we've got you an all-inclusive trip out to England, Let, and you're getting it. Full let's see things. what you've won. I thought we were going to come to his house and wait for him to get back from the golf course, and then both we tackle him to the ground and just tattoo it on him. Yeah. Oh, and man. we're going to do I it with a golf club. I can't believe I've just won. I can't believe I've never won anything in my life. Just won. Let's the, see the what giveaway. you could have won. You just won your own podcast giveaway. Dan, 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 that's a conspiracy. I think it might be an inside job. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think Dean might have planned this. OGSocks.co.uk, code NAC, healthwisestudio.uk, code NAC. Um, there's some we're gonna have some ads apparently coming up. On we're Spotify, do... we do. Already? Yeah, we have ads on Spotify, which is nice. That's the premium. That's because well, that's people who don't have premium, right? No, I've got premium. <laughs> So I've got people and I get ads in my podcast. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting ads on the podcast. But we so don't get paid for those ads. Who the fuck's getting our, our Spotify? Our, who the fuck's putting ads on them, bastards? Spotify. Where's our money? Spotify putting money? ads on it. There we go. Well, all right, I'll so take it back. So when we work, we'll work, we'll work that out, how Spotify <laughs> are putting ads on our podcast uh, for premium accounts. But we'll work that out. Uh, but there, there will be some ads coming soon, which we're really sorry about. But it does mean that we can afford to do this more. More frequently, but yeah. If you want ad free content, make sure you're on the Patreon. Make sure you subscribe Segway. to Spotify. <laughs> and make sure you subscribe to Spotify. Segway. Um, and last announcement, last thing is pretty much every Tuesday or Monday going forward, me and JJ will be doing live streams Woo. on the YouTube channel. One day a week, we'll be doing a live stream. <laughs> yeah, one day a month. One day, one day a week, we'll be doing live streams because we want to give you guys. Excellent content. content, excellent yeah. content, and I think I think someone said that the stream on on Monday was excellent. Win win. Know if, it was, it was fucking fun. listening, <laughs> and and that's it. That's the end of it. Yeah. Thank you everybody for listening. Um, yeah. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein himself. There we Hashtag go. Hashtag yeah. Research Caker. 
Hashtag don't swear. <laughs> Back, there isn't it? I'm here. Bye, Brown. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 We're not the first. We definitely.